Hello and welcome back to Northwestern Models TV and today I'm going to show you how to build the wooden yard crane kit in double O gauge from Ancorton Models. So let's get started. Right, well as with any kit obviously the most important thing is to actually open it and see what uh, bits we have inside. So we've got some brown string. We have a white plastic rod and we have one, two frets um, for this particular kit as well as ooh, quite a big sheet of instructions. Double sided but they're quite big pictures and obviously there's the um, overall you know, picture to tell us what it's supposed to look like at the end. So what I'll do, as always, is have a quick scan through the instructions uh, so I've got a bit of an idea of uh, how it goes together and then we can see about actually getting it together. Okay, so I've read through the instructions a couple of times um, because it does, although there's not many components to the kit, it does seem like it uh, could be quite complex to put together. but. So I think if we go through step by step, uh, then we should be we should be okay uh, with it, and it's, it is fairly simple. I think once you get into it, um, you should be fine. So the first thing to do is to start building the main framework together, and for that we need to laminate together the parts number two and number four before we add in any other um, parts to it, um, because two and four. Um, don't have any sort of extra details on them. So they're fairly, uh, as you can see, there's no additional sort of etching or anything on there. Um, so these are like the inner components to give it uh, a bit of thickness and overall strength as well, I would imagine. So let's pull that out of there. So, as always, the glue we're going to use is the Deluxe Materials Rocket Card Glue. Um, it's just really good for laser cut kits. I've used it on so many, and if you've watched any of our other uh, videos, you will have seen uh, that we've done that. So, just a thin or small amount of glue all around. And then, quite simply, Stick one part on top of the other and make sure it's all lined up and just use your fingers and just get rid of any excess glue which might have splurted out of the side as you stuck them together. Now if you wanted, if you had slightly more runny glue or PVA glue you could get some pegs uh, to help hold them together in place and uh, just apply a little bit of pressure on them uh, but that's entirely up to you. Um, the next part is to then add uh, part number one and number three which have the um, etched details on them. Now obviously for these you need to make sure that when you come to glue them on that you glue them on in well, the right way around. So, let's get number one and number three out. And I'll be able to show you some of the detail that's on there. So, hopefully you can see uh, there that we've got some detail around here uh, and some other bits and pieces around there. So, we need to obviously put one on one side, one on the other, and again just make sure it lines up with the other parts underneath when you come to stick it together. And like so, just make sure it's all lined up. Let's just squeeze 
squeeze it together and any glue that does squeeze out just, uh, just wipe it away with your fingers it should be fine so that's that side and now for the other side As I've said numerous times, the good thing about this particular particular glue is that it is relatively fast drying. It's certainly quick grabbing, so it'll uh, grab it and then, like I say, just squeeze it together like so. So what I'm going to do is actually grab a couple of pegs just to hold like the ends together um, just to, just to give it a little bit of something to keep it there so I'll put that to one side briefly to um, let it all set before we move on to the next bit so that's the other so the next part is to um, construct the upper wheel by laminating the inner wheel, which is part 9, between the two outer pieces, part 8, with the spokes aligned. So, that is this component, these components here, and you'll notice that part number 9 is, uh, although the same size, has a thinner outer edge to it. That's so that it creates a sort of pulley wheel effect. And again, Let's see if we can get that out of there. Get that out of the way, and as it says in the instructions, try and make sure that the wheels, that the spokes, all align on the wheels. So I'm going to put some glue on one of the larger pieces because it's just going to be a little bit easier, I think. Certainly don't want a lot of glue on it. We want it to go on nicely and line up well. And then once you've got that one on, just again a little bit of glue just hold the other wheel on as well again as I said just making sure it is all aligned together so that you can hopefully see there that we've got a nice um, looking pulley wheel to make sure that it does stay together I am just going to bang a peg on there to hold it in place while the glue goes off so I think basically the beginning part of building this kit up is to make a lot of some sub sub assemblies, um, and that. Um, and then it does actually say uh, glued small space, which is part six, to the back of the wheel and set aside to dry. Um, so where's part six? It's there. So that's part six. See if we can get that out of there. Come on, there we go. That's part six, which is a tiny little uh, space of piece there. But whilst I'm also here, the next stage is to laminate the two parts of the hook, which is part 16, together. So I'll get them out and stick them together whilst I'm doing this. There's quite a fine hook on there, so it's not going to want a lot of glue at all, so literally just a blob. And again, just stick the parts together, like so. And if I can find there they are, and because it's quite a small component, I'm just going to clamp that with the uh, tweezers just to hold it together. 
Right, let's see about sticking that little space in place. Just while we're here. There we go. Alright, I'll leave that to one side to dry as well. So, like I say, we've now got a number of little components together, um, just to one side, just drying off. Um, before we you know, proceed much further. Right, so um, next part is to glue the tooth of one part of part 11 uh, into the top of the slot on part 1 as shown in figure 4. And then repeat with the second part of 11 at the bottom and then glue part 12 between them. So parts 11 and 12 are these pieces here. So when you look at the diagram it does sort of show it a bit better um, to put those in and that into the slot which is uh, just at the bottom of part one which is there which is one of these big side pieces so I'm going to cut them out put the glue in there and then put them into it and hopefully that makes a bit of sense As these are very small pieces So be careful not to lose them anywhere. As they probably would one of those pieces which if you drop it it's gone. Right, okay. So is the glue in there. So Part 11, at one end, the other part 11 at the other end, and then part 12 in the middle, and it does say it's supposed to protrude a little bit higher than the other two pieces. So that, and then pull them together. So I might want a little bit of extra glue in there, just to stick the parts eleven to. Part twelve. Right, and I think the trick again is to set it to one side and let it dry off before you go and do anything else to it. You know, once you've once you've got it in position let it let it be. And there. Right. It does at this point say um, in quite in bold it, on the instructions uh, it, it is advisable at this point to paint or stain the main body of the crane and the remaining parts, i.e. the hook, the handle, support strut, wheels, wheel rim and base parts before completing um, construction. Okay, um, I'm actually going to paint it afterwards um, because I just like to get everything together first and then paint it. Um, when all the parts are dry, glue the three large spaces, part five, to the outside of the circle on part one, as shown by the arrow in figure six. So that is uh, the bits that go on here. It also looks like we should put some spaces in the middle of there as well. So part five is on that one, so I can dig those out. 
So we want two in between. I may have missed uh, that. Oh yes, I did miss that earlier. Let's glue two of the large spaces on the inside of the lower circle of the crane. Yep, I missed that bit earlier. Getting too far ahead of myself. It does happen. As you sort of see how you know, a kit is going together and go, ah yes, it goes together like that. And then you inadvertently jump ahead of yourself. Right, so there's one spare available at the moment. So I'm just trimming off the extra little bits of uh, wood that I didn't want to uh, come out of there. So we need two bits in there. Let's get one in and then the other right. So that's the two bits in the middle of the circular bit. Right. Uh, what does it say? It says uh, to glue three large spaces to the outside of the circle in part one, shown by the arrow. Now, it goes on the same side as the um, parts 11 and 12 we've just put on there. So, I'll just add those in. Uh, just one at a time. And I'm just going to squash it down with the craft knife. Right, on to page two. Ah, I see what that makes up now. So the next bit does sound quite complicated, just re-reading through that then. Um, well, I think it's fairly, it'd be fairly obvious once you've got your head around it a bit. Um, uh, it says, slot part 13 over the protruding end of part 12, which is that little bit that we left uh, a little bit higher there. Um, and glue in place, as shown in figure 7. Figure seven. So we'll do that. Uh, really, with, with any kit, if it's got a decent set of instructions and photos, like this one does have, it does make life a lot easier, especially if you're sort of unfamiliar with it, because sometimes things aren't always as obvious as you would like them to be. So that will go on there. Now that does seem a little bit tight fitting in there, so I'm just going to try and just shave a tiny bit out, just open it up a bit with the craft knife. So I'm just doing a bit of a dry run first to make sure it's going to behave itself, which it is. And I think we'll glue that from behind as I've wedged it in place. I would do if my glue decided it wanted to work. The end sealed up again. Oh, there we go. Squirt out the end. Right, let's try again. So, to glue 
on the back side to hold it. Right, so now you've got that one in place. Turn the crane over and glue part 14 in corresponding position as shown in figure 8. So, part 14 is the opposite to part 13. And like I said, if we flip it over and then glue on the crane pretty much where it's going to go and then line it up with the other one. Part 13, you just have to sort of do it by eye and then once you've got it in place it's in place kind of thing. Right, okay, so glue the remaining large space of part 5 and the wheel, part 7, to the circle. Position the curved gearbox cover, part 15, butting the wheel and glue onto place as shown in figure 9. So we're going on this side now. Um, so we want that large spacer, which is part 5. And that's going to go on the circle. Then with part 7, which is the other wheel. So let's drop that out. So let's glue those in. Quite quickly running out of parts, so we are obviously getting somewhere. This right, and now the wheel in the center. Right, so uh, position the curved gearbox cover, part 15, abutting the wheel, and glue into place as shown in figure 9. So that's part 15 there, which to me looks like a brake block <laughs> off a wagon or something. Um, but it is actually, in fact, you know, being you know, suggested as a gearbox cover, and that goes on the outside of the wheel on top of that piece there. So again, just drop that into place and get it in as close as you want, as close as you sort of can to the uh, to the wheel there. Alright, so we're looking at something like now. Now, right, the next part is trim the base of the crane post and glue into the circular base, part 10. Then laminate the rectangular base, base pieces, 18 and 19 together, and glue to the base of the crane. Okay, right, so, one thing at a time. Part 10 is that one. It's got quite a nice uh, effect on there, sort of... Uh, brick type effect I suppose you could call it. All right, so the base of the crane is where we've been working. Now let's see how easy it will go together. And it does say to trim it a bit, which seems a bit strange really. What's this case of well which way do you trim it? Why not make the the hole big enough in the design process? So it is only out by a small amount. So what I'm going to do instead of trying um, to actually we will do that to trim that down slightly. I'm just going to use a needle file and just sand the base, not the base, the, uh, the 
bottom of the um, main post a bit just to smooth it out and just see if we can get it to slide on so it doesn't need to go on far If you haven't got a um, needle file, um, a small bit of sandpaper would be fine. A bit of, uh, it'll do the job just as well. But we do actually sell needle files, so if you need some, we do have them available. Well, like I said, I would have expected for a laser cut kit that something as simple as that you know, just making that hole big enough would have been quite easy. Obviously, I'm either missing something or and courts and models are missing a trick there. Considering the rest of the kit's gone together really nicely, you think, well, why do we need to? Why do I have to sand this bit down just to get it on, to get it to fit in? Why couldn't you just make the uh, hole the right size? But there we go, I have got it down, I've got it wedged on there. So we'll glue that all together once we've glued parts 18 and 19 together, I think it was, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, yes, laminate the rectangular base pieces part 18 and 19 together and glue to the base of the crane. So, so 18, 19, and 19. Obviously, 19 is the larger of the two base pieces. So if we're off that fret, into the bin it goes. So glue that on there and then glue the base on top of that. I might have got a little bit too much glue there. Just use the same glue for that. So we have to put that on. There. Oh yes, a bit too much glue that. Never mind. At least we know it's not going to come apart in a rush. And then that's all onto there. Now you probably find that you'll have to hold it for a little while while the glue goes off. Which is only to be expected because obviously it's um, going to want to keep falling over. Like so. <laughs> um, so. Do watch out for that bit. Something I can use just to um, hold that in place for a couple of minutes. All I'll do is read the next instruction. <laughs> right. Glue the handle part 17 into position as seen in figure 10. Alright, so that's got to go through there. Why wouldn't you do that before sticking that all together? Okay. Alright, let's. Do that, so that can hold that together. 
that's what I get. Part 17, which is handle, get that out of there. Which is a really nice sort of traditional old cranked handle which you might be able to sort of see there. And that is the last of the bits off that fret as well. So that can also go in a bit. So we are very near the end. Right, so which side does it say to put the handle? So the handle, it's saying to put on the side where the wheel isn't. So it's to put it on this side here. Before we glue it, let's see if it goes through the holes or not. Oh, it does. Well, that's good then. Right, as it's in there. Blob of glue. Again, possibly a bit much there. Always handy having a bit of kitchen roll available for any spills and things. Alright, so that's there. Right. <laughs> Glue the top wheel, uh, part 8, into place on the opposite side of the crane to the bottom wheel. Right, okay then. So, our old wheel. Now, where does that go? That lines up. By the looks of it with that little pulley wheel at the top. So we've got this little wheel here. By the looks of it, our big pulley wheel lines up with that. So that's where that needs to go on there. Fussly. Again, I'm just going to hold that in place while the glue goes off. Obviously, it's quite a bit of weight and it's going to want to keep trying to break free and fall off and not stay balanced. So, again, trying to find the best position to hold everything can sometimes be part of the challenge. Definitely getting there. Once that dries, I'm going to go and grab a cup of tea. So I'll be back once that's dried. Right, that's better. That has more or less dried as well. So that's an encouraging sign. So, our next task is to get that little piece of white plastic um, from the top to down the front end of the crane there. So we will need to trim it to length. Some cutters. Um, let's see if we can stand it up. Stand up on its own? Not quite. Let's put that down as a bit of weight. So let's go from there to there. Um, so we're going to need to cut it about there somewhere, so it just sits on it. Now 
not. So, put a glue either end and I'll go in position. There. So. Glue on there, put a glue on the top. <clears throat> on there, I'll start a bit more glue there, that seems to have been. Start off quite quickly there. There we are. Right. So, once we've got that. Uh, piece on. Um, and it does say once all the parts are dry, attach the hook, which is part 16, which we you know, stuck together earlier, uh, still in the tweezers there, um, and then arrange the thread uh, around the winding drum as required and secure the thread with glue up the appropriate points to maintain tension as seen in figure 12. Now, I'm actually going to paint this uh, before I um, put the thread together on it. But having looked at the thread, it does seem quite thick. It does seem quite a thick thread for what it really needs to be. So I may uh, actually use some thinner thread, um, which you can obviously pick up from any sort of uh, craft um, store or sewing store, knitting store, or whatever. Um, anywhere that sells cross stitch or something like that um, which I think will work a lot better than that because I think it, it just feels a bit too chunky for me for what it is really for and I think um, when you look at photographs of these yard cranes in use um, they were generally it was a, a thin it was it was a suitable sized cable obviously but it was a lot thinner than what um, this is. Alternatively, if you wanted, um, you could get some very thin chain, um, which would probably be more accurate actually. Um, I think you can get it from, uh, I'm trying to think of that, it might be Slater's might do some, or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I think that would work better. But on the whole, that is, you know, apart from obviously fitting the, the hook and the cable to it, that is essentially this uh, wagon, uh, not wagon kit, this yard crane kit uh, is, is now built. So, there we are, that's how to put together the Anne Corton um, wooden yard crane kit. Uh, it's a nice kit, and it's gone together on the whole really well, and there's obviously there's some improvements um, that I think could be made to it. Uh, but uh, as a nice little kit for a country goods yard, uh, I think that's uh, quite a nice uh, a nice winner and you know it, it's not taken me particularly long to put together um, you know you could easily do that in an evening and then paint it the following day or you could do as the instructions say and split it halfway you know and then paint it and and, um, and so on obviously you know I need to put the um, the hook and the the cable or chain on there whichever I decide to to do so anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, don't forget to give us a good old thumbs up. Also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button as well, as it really does help the channel out. So, I think that's everything, and until next time, happy modelling!